Good morning and welcome to the Anthony Petiti Organic Gardening Show. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'm Cindy Petiti, your host, and here we are into October. And um, so much happens in October. We are in the midst of harvest time, um, and so lots of things are happening. So we're going to go ahead, open up our show with a word of prayer, and get into all that's happening around Stark, Tuscaroras, Wayne, and Holmes counties. Father, we just come before you, and we thank you for your goodness and your grace, Father. We just, we love you so much. And we are so unworthy. But by your grace, Father, we just love you and we thank you for that. We thank you for all you do. We just ask that you use our show to help people learn how to take care of the wonderful plants that you have given us. And we ask this in your precious and your holy name. Amen. Well, we have a lot going on in October. There are all types of activities going on um, for fall. Many of us are really ready to get out and do things. And this great season of things going on outside is great. So um, today there are farmers markets. Um, The Alliance Farmers Market is going on until noon. North Canton until noon. Um, The... uh, Uh, I think it's called, it's part of the 720 group um, that's at Oakwood Square. They start at 11 and go till 4. Um, And uh, actually also Louisville is having their monthly farmer's market today. And that's where I will be as soon as we're finished up here. I will be downtown Louisville um, with great produce um, that we have this week as long as well as um, those fall decorating items and things like that. So please um, get out today. It's a little cool, but enjoy these cool, crisp fall days um, that we have because we know what follows. And so um, I want you to get out there to the farmer's markets and uh, get some harvest um, items in so you can maybe can some tomatoes or make some pepper mustard or some of those kind of things. And these farmers have worked very very hard um, all summer long and now they have wonderful harvests for you so please go and support your local farmers um, and artisans and craftsmen and all of those kind of things um, also there's a lot of other things going on around the county um, f- like fall festivities I know at Kingsway they in Hartville they're doing theirs Mays Valley um, Arrowhead Orchard in East Canton um, I think there's something over at Nickajack Farms um, as well in the Canal Fulton area um, if I've missed any I'm sorry I will mention them if you let me know. Um, But all of these outdoor activities where you can um, have your social distancing, um, you can be out in the fresh air, you can enjoy what God has given us at this beautiful time of the year. Now, on the 17th of October is our one-day fall festival, and we would love all of you to jot down this information so that you can enjoy this wonderful day with us. Um, Like I said, it is on the 17th of this month, and that's just two weeks from today. And we have all kinds of things going on that um, we would love to have you come and participate in. So we're going to have pumpkin carving stations, scarecrow making stations. Um, We have a face painting station. Um, And all of these are really self-done so that you won't have to have um, close interaction. Normally we face paint for you, but um, you will face paint your um, your friends or your family yourselves this time. We'll have different types of crafts for the kids, some mask making, um, but these are going to be more of the um, fun mask um, than the mask that recently we have all been used to doing. Um, we have um, our haunted maze, which will be a little bit different um, than it has been before. We will be doing a lot of sanitizing between um, the individual groups of kids that go in. You'll have to be going in with um, your family only or the folks that you come with that you um do not experience the social distancing with um, and then we'll sanitize before the next group goes in so those things will be a little bit different but we are going to really um, up 
our scavenger hunt this year. So if you like scavenger hunts and you're up for um, lots of walking, um, this scavenger hunt is going to be quite intensified from years past scavenger hunts. We're going to do a lot of things. You're going to be collecting. We're going to have prizes at the end. Um, So if you want to do something fun with your family and friends, um, come on out. Um, And this day is going to be a lot of fun, but that scavenger hunt is going to be over the top um, with lots of fun things. Um, to find. But really, some of the biggest um, attractions to our fall festival is the farm animals. And so you'll all get to experience that. We will be doing horse rides on Morgan, our horse. Um, We will have feed that you can uh, get for to give everybody some little treats. The alpacas love to eat out of your hands. So does Morgan. He loves carrots. Um, The goats, um, the chickens and the ducks and the turkeys are all running around. We have new little pigs. Um, Watch our Facebook page. You'll get sneak peeks of all of um, our little animals that you can come and visit. We will also have a miniature baby pig, and you will be able to even hold... um, Um, Her name is Carly. Carly, that's her name. Um, You can um, hold Carly, and she is just so sweet. So we would love for all of you to come over to our fall festival, October 17th. We will have um, food and fun and games and vendors. So many of the farmer's market vendors that you are used to seeing, those markets will be ending next Saturday. And so those vendors will be at our fall festival. So um, if you want some great produce, um, we'll have um, several of the produce vendors, um, but really some great artisans and craftsmen um, that will be set up at our fall festival as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We have Carmen. She is new new um, to our group and she does string art and she does such an exceptional string art. She did some volunteer work at our store um, this summer with a group and um, we saw her talent and so we have actually displayed it at our store but she's also going to be one of our vendors at the fall festival so that's going to be a lot of fun so we would love all of you to take advantage of that. And also um, if you are in the Louisville area Um, Louisville has for several years the Chamber of Commerce has sponsored a scarecrow um, parade so the scarecrows will be on parade um, starting next Saturday the 10th Um, chamber members we all um, build a scarecrow um, about our business and um, we will be setting them out next Saturday morning um, between 10 and noon and then they will be on display at their little parade um, through the uh, 25th, I believe. And um, that will be, yes, and through the 25th, they'll all, they'll be on display and then they'll be um, taken down at that time. But that way, um, and we'll have different types of um, activities throughout, but this is going to be a lot of fun for you to go through um, Louisville and see the scarecrows. They will all be on display um, in the green space um, at 504 East Main Street, um, right behind um, the old post office where the um, old middle school used to sit. Um, So that's going to all be on display. So we want to, you know, invite Invite you to um, go downtown Louisville and um, check those out. And if you come down to the farmers market today, you'll get to see me, and we'll direct you where the scarecrows will all be, and you'll be all set to uh, take part in that fun activity. Well, we need to get into some of the questions um, that you all have had throughout um, the last week about what's going on in our gardens and harvesting time and some of the things we'll probably touch on that we touched on um, in past weeks, but we want to make sure um, that we cover a lot of these things. And first off, um, we have had a lot of people asking about caladium. And caladiums um, are a bulb, and they are very, very pretty. Um, some people get them mixed up with hostas um, or aloe and calocasias um, because they are just a leafed plant. They don't have a flower, and um, they are they have a large leaf, but not as large as like the cala- the alocasia or some people call them elephant ears. So they're the caladiums doesn't have 
that large of a leaf. It's a nice large leaf, but not huge like some of those other ones, like the large hostas and those, but they are much more colorful. They are also much more delicate. They're very thin. Their leaves are like paper thin. Um, and they tear very easily, so they don't handle the cold at all. So if you have caladium um, in a pot or in the ground, whichever, they if you haven't pulled them in yet, they are probably starting to look really, really bad. If you pulled them in because you have them in a pot, they're probably still looking good because they cannot handle under 40 degrees. And in most areas, we have had a couple nights that it did get under 40 degrees. And um, so they might not be looking well. But just because, and this is where our questions have come in, they have a caladium, um, they left it out, it is looking, it's wilted completely down now, is it dead? So that is that top part is dead. It's gone. It's nothing else is happening. No photosynthesis is going through. It's done. But you can harvest your bulb and save it till next year. So if you have these caladium in the ground, you're going to want to dig them up. You're going to want to spray them off good with your garden hose, get the dirt off of them, and then you want to set them in the sun to dry. Um, on a picnic table or um, in a box. You just don't want to put them in a bag um, that is plastic or seal them up because then they'll rot. So you want to make sure that they're dried well before you put them away for storage. Um, and when we're having rain and things like that, as we will have more often in the fall, um, you might want to put them in the garage or under a porch that has a roof, something like that, so that they will dry nicely for you. Once they're dried, you can put them in a paper bag um, um, or some people like to put them in some peat moss or some uh, sawdust or something like that so that they stay dry and they don't get moist. And then you will have it for next year. And what we recommend is pull them out sometime the first part of March, put them in your container, plant them up, and then they will be beautiful and ready to go out when you're putting out all of your annuals next year. You're going to do the same with your caladium as you do your aloe and calocasias. Um, those are the elephant ears um, because they are not a hardy bulb either. Now, many people have asked, well, what happens if I just leave them in the ground? And in most cases, if you just leave them in the ground, they will just die because their bulb is not meant to handle our winter temperatures. Now, I guess we could have a very, very mild winter and you could mulch it real heavy. And some people say that they have come back, especially the elephant ears. Um, but normally they will not. And I have never seen a caladium come back that was you know, left in the ground or left outside. So you definitely want to bring it in. The other question that we had was, can I leave my caladium? I pulled it in before the frost and I, so it's still looking beautiful right now. Can I keep it going? You could keep it going um, probably till December or January when the days start to get extremely short and um, we are in the dark, you know, more hours than we're in the light. Um, but the bulb is meant to rest, so it's going to do better for you next year if you do let the bulb rest. So if you have brought it in, the plant still looks good, let it keep going, let that um, photosynthesis keep happening and that the leaf tissue to continue to feed the bulb, maybe even until Thanksgiving, and then go ahead and do what I said, pull it out of the pot, you know, spray it off good, cut off the top, all the foliage, let that bulb rest for a few months before you put it back in and get it going because your bulb is just not going to have the energy that it needs if you want to keep it going forever. It's not technically a house plant. It needs that time to rest. And then you should have some good luck with having beautiful collection and being able to keep your bulb year after year. Now, if you don't have such great luck or you forget to do any of these things, we do have caladium bulbs at the store and we also get them in very early and start them early. So if you wanna buy the plant, we'll have those ready for you too in the spring. Well, here we are halfway through the show. We need to take a short break and hear from our sponsor, Bull Country Compost and Hayseed Hank. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. <music> 